and it's mathematically generated and we're going to use them to do two things we're going to first of all add some colour to the surface of the rock and then we're also going to change the surface texture of the rock by using what's called a bump map so the first thing that we need to do in Blender is go into the camera view numpad 0 so we can see what we're doing now what we'll do one of the nice things about cycles is that we can actually view the render as we build up so what we're going to do is we're going to have the editing area up here and we're going to have a rendering view down here I'm just going to get rid of the tools and everything so N and T in those windows N and T clean it up a little bit so in this bottom window if we now go down here and on this you can see that because we've got cycles selected we can do rendered and at the moment it just looks like a plain grey rock with a terrible looking scene down the middle that's fine I'm happy with that but what we're going to select on this top window is we're going to select the node editor so if you look up here you'll see it says node editor and to begin with it's just a blank screen the node editor is all of the things that we used to have down the side in terms of um, materials and textures and things like that they are still there and they will appear in terms of um, when we edit the nodes but we're going to use nodes today to do the job so first thing to do is select the material add a material and create a new material and you'll notice that we've got a material output and a diffuse shader so there's lots of different shaders select a different one so select a glossy shader and you'll see immediately underneath that the rendered image has changed that's now glossy and we can change we can make it into glass if we like we can make it into transparent translucent and so on we're just going to go for a straightforward diffuse shader so we need two of these diffuse shaders we're going to have a kind of speckly surface on this so moving the material output over a bit um, we'll add another diffuse shader just by doing shift and a and you'll see that you get um, a menu up here and under the shaders add another diffuse shader so in the first diffuse shader we're just going to set this to a light grey colour and this is going to be kind of the surface of the rock so this is going to be the main colour that we've got so if you're happy with that that's fine the bottom diffuse shader we're going to set to a much darker, darker grey and this is going to be kind of a, a speckled area on the surface of the rock so kind of a light grey base and then dark grey colour the next thing that we're going to do is to add a, a mix shader which is going to mix these together so here's my mix shader and what I need to do is just take the output of the first shader and plug it into here take the output of the second shader and plug it into here and finally if I plug the mix shader into the surface you'll see let me just get rid of that so just drag that off the volume it's connected it to the volume we're not really interested in that um, you'll see that we've now mixed both the light grey and the dark grey to get this mid grey colour well it's not very interesting at the moment so what we're going to do is we're going to add a procedural texture now when we're in the old blender render to add a texture we go over to here and do something with this over here but this time we're going to add it in the nodes window so we're going to get used to using that so shift A add a texture and we're going to add what's called a musgrave texture so here's our musgrave texture and what we're going to do is we're going to connect the output of this this factor here to this so depending upon the output of the musgrave te shader texture sorry um, we're going to get a light gray color or a dark gray color if we just do that straight away so if we connect that and just move this around to make it a bit more obvious what's going on there so if we connect that straight away you'll see that not a lot happens the magic happens when we start to change some of these things so I'm just plugging in some of the things that I changed 
uh, played around with earlier to get a sort of image that I was interested in. So I went for 40 in terms of the scan. You'll immediately see that these dark areas have now appeared on the surface based on that musgrave texture that's been generated up here. So we changed a few more of those, so I'm going to make it more detailed. You'll notice it's sort of fuzzy around the edges, so if I make that 16, it's giving me a much harder outline. Um, the dimension is 2, I'm going to make that 0.2. And the lacunarity, which I'm not quite sure what this is, um, I'm going to make it to 2. And you'll see there that immediately, and this is, I'm not quite sure what this actually means, but immediately what we've got is this mottled texture on the surface of the rock. So it looks much more like a sort of rock that you would get at the seaside now than it did before. The only issue with this at the moment is that the surface is exactly as I've modelled it. In other words, there's no sort of bumpiness to the surface. There's no texture interest to the surface. So what we'll do is we'll add that texture interest. Now this is what's called a bump map and it's included down here in what's called displacement. So if we just zoom out a bit on this window, move my mouse the wrong way there, okay, and just move that up. What I'm going to do is again add another texture to this and I'm going to add a noise texture now. So just down the bottom here, add a noise texture and I could um, bring this up to the displacement straight away and this time I use not the colour but the factor into the displacement of the surface and you'll see there was a slight change there, not a great deal um, but enough that we get a bit, little bit of surface interest so if we now render this what you'll see in there is, is something pretty like uh, the sort of rocks that you would get at the beach and if you play around with this, if we start to play around with this um, make this something like 40 you'll see that you get a much bumpier texture and we can increase the detail of this so um, we can start to get something which is maybe not as sea worn it looks, it looks maybe a little high on the scale there so if we increase the detail we decrease the scale to something like 10 um, our rock's got those little lumps and bumps on the surface now, um, but it's it's no longer smooth, it's no longer seaworn. So it's really down to you to play with these um, settings in each of these to come up with a set of things that you feel um, would look like something that you'd find at the seaside. Just one more to play with. Um, while I was playing around, I actually set this um, to a power of 2, 512, and came up with this, which I actually thought was probably about the nicest setting that I've found. It's, it's kind of a little bit surface detail, a little bit of texture there, a little bit of bumpiness, and um, it's, it's got a real mottled effect that you might find at the beach. And if I just render that, uh, we get something quite nice.